Hello, you're on the crane with Fraser Air. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 running gags on Fraser. Well, who is hallucinationing now? You are not getting the rest of my scones, so just forget it. Before you do something this rash, I mean, perhaps you should consider it from all angles. I spent three years considering Daphne from all angles. For this list, we're looking at the funniest recurring jokes from this long-running sitcom. And of course, if you haven't watched the whole show yet, this is your spoiler alert. So, which of these running gags did you find quite stylish? Let us know in the comments. I'm listening. All right, let's get into it. Number 10, Niles' rivalry with Freddy. Hi, Daphne. <laughs> Frederick's my boyfriend. Oh, really? It's not every day you see a child and a fully grown man compete for someone's affection, but Niles certainly saw his kid nephew as a threat. And this morning I heard this soft little knocking at my door and it was Frederick asking if he could climb into bed with me. <laughs> really? Harboring a crush on Daphne, Freddie always tries to impress her and is spoiled in return. This more than just annoys Niles, whose own feelings for Daphne lead him to be jealous of the attention Freddie receives from her. It's ridiculous. What have you got to be envious of? Hold on! Please! <laughs> the two even end up competing for Daphne's affections, where Freddie usually has the upper hand, much to Niles' annoyance. Although he usually encourages his nephew in other pursuits that they both have an interest in, when it comes to Daphne, all bets are off. You can fool them, but you can't fool me. <laughs> I'm on to you, little man. Number nine, Niles and Fraser's snootiness. Someone at the racket club was talking about this. It's very, very exclusive. In complete contrast to their down-to-earth father, Fraser and Niles absolutely live for the high-class lifestyle. Known for indulging in anything that gives them a privileged position in society, the brothers embody this in their mannerisms and general attitude. It's beautiful! Yes! This is where we belong! Oddly enough, they don't get along as well with people who behave exactly like them, proving they're not really aware of how eccentric they can be. What do you think of Rodney? Bit of a pretentious fop, wouldn't you say? <laughs> It doesn't remind you of anyone? This also lands them in some tight spots as Fraser and Niles look to cut corners to move up in their social circles, sometimes at the expense of their dignity. Then again, there's also something comfy about seeing the two brothers enjoy that customary sherry. No, I'm in a sherry mood tonight. <laughs> sherry? What an intriguing idea. <laughs> Number eight, Fraser's mishaps at the radio station. Hello, Mark. I'm listening. Frazier's job at the radio station has its fair share of trial and error, as the titular character has to contend with several wacky callers. You've never told your audience you're gay. <laughs> Excuse me? I saw you in a gay bar last night. This continues for the entire series, with the problems of these callers ranging from mildly annoying to completely over the top. Frazier himself contributes to his antics at KACL, getting romantically involved with his colleagues. You bad boy. <laughs> Dirty girl. Bad boy. Dirty girl. <laughs> at times when he's feeling rebellious or wants to make a point, Frazier ditches all pretense of integrity and steers the radio show towards more risque material. Who wants to talk about sex? Sex, 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 sex. His insecurities at being replaced also lead to several disasters on air, which somehow still doesn't damage his reputation permanently. Well, I'm having a problem breaking through a barrier with my in-laws. Boring. <laughs> Number seven, Roz's dating life. If there's one character in the series who's comfortable in their own skin, it would have to be Roz. I assume at the next meeting of Seattle's Haven't Kissed Roz Club, it'll just be me and the Archbishop. <laughs> I'll save you the club dudes. Oh, <laughs> Open about her preference to play the field, Roz's many dates frequently show up and get progressively crazier. Will you tell him that I think he's a really nice guy? Uh -huh. uh, Roz prove que vous êtes génial. Ironically, a flashback episode reveals Frazier's belief that Roz isn't very successful in the dating scene, which is anything but the truth. I think the poor thing has a hard time meeting men. Keeping this so fresh in our minds are Niles' frequent jabs at her expense, with the two routinely trading insults. The label says it's famously spreadable. Funny, Roz, doesn't your label say the same thing? <laughs> what does yours say, Niles? May cause drowsiness. It reaches its most ridiculous peak when Roz hooks up with none other than Frasier himself, 
and even considers a misheard offer from Daphne and Niles that they never let her live down. It was only because it was so weird. I didn't know what to say. Is that why? I think someone has a little crush on us. Yeah. Number six, Frasier and Niles' sibling rivalry. Despite their obvious similarities, the two Crane brothers love to argue over who is superior. Taking after their mother, Frazier and Niles constantly butt heads over whose brand of psychiatry is better. Niles, you're a psychiatrist. You know what it's like to listen to people prattling on endlessly about their mundane lives. <laughs> Touché. And on that subject, I heard your show today. The two are more than aware of their rivalry, but that doesn't stop them from stooping to petty levels just to rub it in each other's face. We'll never top this bit. You're right, Niles. I won't top it. I will. Double it. On more than a few occasions, Frasier and Niles' ill-fated collaborations spiral into complete chaos, turning them back into a pair of bickering children. I do not have a fat face! Oh, please, I keep wondering how long you're gonna store those nuts for winter! Ironically, pretty much everyone apart from Niles and Frasier consider them to be exactly the same, a fact that only adds fuel to the fire. Because I am the one giving the party, and you are that other one! Yes, well, I'm the one that invited her, so that makes you that other one! That's absolutely ridiculous! It's you know in the depths of no, your heart knew Number five, Frasier's annoyance with Eddie. There are plenty of things that can make Frasier fly off the handle, but none more so than Eddie the dog. And may we always remember to share with those less fortunate. <laughs> oh, will you stop staring! Only begrudgingly keeping him for his father's sake, Frasier has little tolerance for Eddie, who seems to enjoy ticking him off even further. While Frasier's annoyance with Eddie has more to do with the dog's nature, he's not exactly wrong in thinking that Eddie keeps staring at him all the time. Dad, Dad, I can't read my paper, Eddie's staring at me. Adding to the gag is the fact that no one else in the family shares this annoyance, with Martin openly favoring his pet over his own son. Just ignore him. I'm trying to. I'm talking to the dog. From Eddie's point of view, Frasier seems to be an enigma that the dog just can't get enough of. Number four, Niles's phobias. While Frasier has his own neurotic tendencies, he doesn't come close to his younger brother. Unlike his tough father, Niles is terrified about just about anything that could possibly do him harm. Wet and slimy and God knows what it's like sticking my hand into the mouth of hell. Yeah! It doesn't end there, as Niles is also racked with all kinds of allergies that show up at the worst times. The only thing that makes you sneeze and scratch your ear is your parchment mite allergy. <laughs> So that was you sneezing from behind the stacks all night. His tendency to be overcome by his own panic doesn't do him any favors, with Niles landing himself in embarrassing moments when his paranoia and anxiety get the better of him. Is it just me or is this elevator swaying? More than anything, it's Niles' reactions to these situations that deliver the biggest laughs. Number three, Martin's chair. Delivery from Martin Crane. Oh, in here. Coming uh, through. Excuse me, excuse me. Frazier's snootiness just doesn't match well with Martin's most prized possession. The squabbles between father and son often reach epic levels, but the most intense ones are usually about Martin's chair. Frazier's many attempts to replace it with one that matches his sense of style always end in disaster. Uh, Frazier, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm a creature of habit and I, I think I'd rather have my old chair back. Oh, Dad, but why? I mean, this chair is a lot more comfortable than the old one and it's, it's, it's therapeutic well, as well. You know, I, know, I, I just never cared for leather. Hilariously, while Martin remains steadfastly comfortable with his choice, Frazier never seems to be content with the interior decoration of his apartment, cycling through many changes. The chair carries significant sentimental value, making it a vital part of Martin's character. I want the chair I was sitting in the night you called me to tell me I had a grandson. I want the chair I was in all those nights when your mother used to wake me up with a kiss after I'd fallen asleep in front of the television. Number two, Maris. For an unseen character, Maris certainly leaves a lasting impression. Hi, Niles. Hello. Where's Maris? Are you two taking separate elevators again? Oh, uh, no, uh, I'm afraid Maris is having one of her episodes. Niles, her devoted husband, spends half the series suffering under her thumb. I've taken Maris to dozens of these things. She's never once asked to dance. Of course, Maris dislikes public displays of rhythm. Her traits are described in so many bizarre ways that it's easy to understand why she never actually appears on screen. 
The series uses clever ways to give us hints about what she's like, which keep getting more bizarre through each reveal. Oh, that will be Dr. Crane. Said he was gonna bring his dog over. Oh, not that four-legged Maris. Over time, Maris's ridiculous demands and lifestyle lead to hilarious revelations that even the rest of the characters find hard to believe. For weeks, all Maris did for excitement was float in her sensory deprivation tank, but now she's taken up fencing and I've never seen her more vital. And it is definitely satisfying when Niles finally gets one up on her. Just give her this message. I've flushed out her family secret. <laughs> Hello, Maris. If you could cast Maris, who would you cast? Actually, I don't even know if that's possible because Maris sounds like such a singular character. It's probably impossible. Anyway, as we have demonstrated, Frasier is full of running gags, but there is one that stands above the rest. So let's look through some honorable mentions and then we'll see our top Frasier running gag. Allusions to BB's true nature, because BB might just be the devil incarnate. Join me, Frasier. <laughs> I'll make your dreams come true. But at what cost? The Crane brothers' inability to lie because these siblings can't fib to save their lives. Well, at least when it came to ethics, I didn't get spontaneous nosebleeds. <laughs> Remember the time we lifted that dollar bill from Mom's change purse? We left quite a gruesome trail back to the treehouse that day. Martin's Korean War references, because these turn up when we least expect them. Well, just ask her if she's interested. Have you lost your mind? Hey, the gals in Pyeongchang used to think I was pretty damn cute. Yeah, well, this is a bit different. You're not 21 and her village hasn't just burned down. Bulldogs over the top rants, because this guy has no filter. I ordered french fries. This stinks! This is totally ass! The Abram boy is gonna... Oh, here they are. Daphne's psychic predictions, because there's no denying that she gets results. You were a policeman, weren't you? Yeah, how'd you know? I must confess, I'm a bit psychic. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Niles's Unrequited Love for Daphne The longest-running storyline in the series, Niles' romantic feelings for Daphne remain unknown to her for years. Fraser told me he'd hired an English woman. I pictured someone a little more... Not quite so. You're Daphne? During this time, Niles makes several unsuccessful attempts to both get over Daphne and win her affections. Oh my god, is it Niles? Oh, I feel so embarrassed. Oh, no, no, please don't be. You know what? Actually, I prefer Miles. But... The comedic aspect comes from how blatantly obvious Niles' feelings are, only for Daphne to be completely oblivious to it. Earlier, you seemed a bit tense. You've really relaxed, though, now, haven't you? <laughs> This leads to many moments between the two where they act like a couple, but never come close to making things official. This was all I could find that fit. Should I go look for something else? No. Yes. No. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> With Fraser well aware of Niles' feelings, his attempts to stop Niles from making a fool out of himself add to the hilarity. Of course, the jokes don't stop when they do get together, as the payoff to this running gag is every bit as explosive as one would expect. Wow, he really is good. <laughs> is Frasier a show that you binge watched? And if so, did you also watch Cheers? And if so, do you have a preference between Frasier or Cheers? And are you looking forward to the Frasier reboot? Anyway, as you can tell, I'm always curious, so be sure to tell me all the answers in the comments, or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton, or on my YouTube channel. And as I mentioned, I'm listening. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.